Hi everyone, Spider-Man1991 here, and it's time for my weekly comic book review. Uh, you may remember two weeks ago I said that I was running out of comic book bags because one of them wasn't bagged. Well, funny story, this week I actually ran out of boards. So, you know, if some of these are, so some of these are, so I have plenty of bags for the comics, but uh, some of them aren't like boarded up, so you know, so if they like try to... Limp, so they like fall back or something while I'm holding them, then that's why. Okay. Anyways, for the comic book review, uh, first off, I did get a, uh, my comic that I usually get one of the independents that I series that I get. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna review it this video because there's another video that it's related to that I'm gonna save it for. So, so let's just get right, skip that and get right into the rest of the comics with DC. First off, Supergirl number 15. Um, hal ba basically sends uh, Kara to Kandor in the Fortress of Solitude since, uh, since as of Superboy, Hell now controls it. So he sends Kara into, the for into Kandor and while Kara gets in there, she has to deal with a few remaining, uh, few remaining Brainiac drones and also she witnesses all the people all the Kandorians that are still in stasis mode until she finds what she's looking for, which is the central uh, power, which is pretty much the uh, central power crystal, uh, uh, wait, quantum crystal, yeah, that's what it was. The quantum crystal of Kandor, which powers the city, so Kara takes it out and she gives it to Hell, who, decide, who says he's going to use it to help them build a time machine so they can go back and prevent Krypton's destruction. <clears throat> All right. Well, if you ask me, I think that that going back in time and trying to prevent like the actual planet's destruction uh, seems kind of full of. Seems like hell is a little full of it. I mean, although I think the whole time machine thing that hell mentioned, I think this might explain why Superman was on Krypton back in uh, Superman number zero. So you know, there. So I think that's hint, hints as to what's going to happen after this. They might. Kara and Supergirl, Superboy, and Superman might just use the time machine to go to Krypton, and that's it. Um, but and it does appear to be there appears to be a romantic relationship now starting to blossom between Hell and Supergirl, if you can believe that. Um, well, I'm only I'm mainly getting Supergirl just for the time for Hell, and I do like this, and I am very interested in Supergirl's part. In the in this crossover because she's the only one that sided with Hell, uh, out of the Superman family. So it is going to be very interesting to see what she's going to do when she finds out that uh, Hell isn't really that Hell might mean destroying what Hell's real motivation is, or if he's going to, you know, try to destroy something, or what finally makes her turn on Hell. That's going to be very interesting to see. So yeah, it, I'd say only get Supergirl if you're going to get the rest of Hell on Earth. Okay, moving right along. Green Lantern number 15. Uh, Simon Boz finally finds the owner of the van. Uh, he goes to confront him and he learns that apparently the guy who owned the van actually planted the bomb in it so that he could cause this train accident because he's basically crazy. And so, right when he's about to shoot Simon, uh, Simon's Green Lantern ring activates and blocks the bullet, but then it runs out of power. So... Simon starts dodging the guy in his own house, and then suddenly, uh, Agent Fed from the last two issues shows up, shows up, and so does the Third Army, and they show up, they convert the owner of the van, and then Fed and Simon are able to escape by using some of the guys, by creating a makeshift bomb in the guy, in the van owner's house, creating a small explosion that allows them to escape, and they, and they manage to escape the, the explosion be by be because they're saved by Green Lantern, uh, Bid Dick. Okay, I can't really say this, but it's the talking squirrel. Okay, it's the squirrel Green Lantern, not Chip, because I think Chip died, but uh, the Chip's successor. Anyways, talking squirrel, talking, talking Green Lantern squirrel saves Boz and Agent Fed. <laughs> and also, we learned that. Also, we now know that Hounds Nestro. Uh, they pretty much only get one page in this issue, but they are, we now learn they're in the death zone. And also the Guardians are still continue are noticing that their third army is growing, but their power is spreading. So they absorb some more of the First Lantern's power. And we also learn the name of the First Lantern, which is 
Volthoom. So, so yeah, we know the first Lantern's name. Uh, I think Boz is finally getting in, finally meets another member of the Green Lantern Corps, which is good. And also, and also, uh, we do have, although not really much insight into what's gonna happen. What's gonna happen to Hal and Sinestro? Um, all right. Well, we finally get a little bit of revelation for Simon Boz's story, which I, which I like, and I do think Simon is definitely an interesting character. But uh, I think maybe after this story arc, I think Green Lantern might go back to Hal and Sinestro, and I'm pretty sure Simon Boz's stories might be told in Justice League of America, which is gonna be launched in February. So. Yeah, but I think Simon Boss is an interesting character, and I do want to get the rest, and I would say still stick around for the rest of this story arc, because I think Hal and Sinestro are going to get, are going to take center stage again pretty soon. Probably after the whole Third Army mess. Okay, moving along. Nightwing, number 15. <clears throat> Alright, well, the Joker pretty much kills uh, the clown of Haley Circus, uh, Dick Grayson's friend Jimmy, uh, and displays the body on, and pretty much, like, hangs the body on the amusement mile sign, which is where Haley's Circus is, and Dick finds out, and when Dick finds out about this, he orders every single member of Haley's Circus, like, to get out of town, it's no longer safe, because of the Joker, and then as Nightwing, he start, he begin, he starts taking a search for his friend Reyna, who the Joker broke out of prison back in Nightwing 14, uh, <clears throat> more seriously, and he's eventually able to find, and after looking at one of the victim, looking over Jimmy's corpse, he's able to figure out that the Joker is at an abandoned aircraft company, and when Nightwing arrives, he finds that the Joker has injected Reyna with some, jo with the, with the Joker venom, and also she's wearing like a tattered, make tattered knockoff Nightwing costume, and so... Rain is pretty much insane, and she's ha and she also Joker taped knives to her fists, so she's pretty much forced to attack Nightwing, and Nightwing is able to hold her off, and then, <clears throat> but then she starts to collapse because of the, because of whatever Joker inv injected her with, and Nightwing is able to give her an ant antitoxin to cure her, but unfortunately, uh, Raina dies and still dies, and. But she is. But with her last breath, she's able to apologize to Dick Grayson for everything that's happened between them. And after she dies, uh, Nightwing discovers a message left by Joker saying that now he's going to attack all of Haley's Circus next. All right. Well, first time, first time I'm getting for death of the fam, death of the family. This is great. I mean, Higgins definitely know. Kyle Higgins, the writer of Nightwing, definitely knows how to tie it all in with. What Scott Snyder has going on in the main Batman series. I mean, seriously, this is this issue pretty much proves that Nightwing is an awesome series that people should be getting. I mean, if you love Batman, the the main Batman series, then you'll pro definitely love this. Um, yeah, and I think it's very interesting the way. Also, uh, Joker's theme throughout this issue was uh, knockoffs because he calls Nightwing basically a knockoff Batman, and and that was a very interesting theme, theme going on with Joker. Um, and as far as Joker not knowing who, uh, as far as whether or not Joker, we're still, I think everyone's pretty much still in debate whether or not Joker really does know each member of the Batman family's secret identity. Well, Joker's going after Haley Circus, and I think that means a lot more Dick Grayson than it does Nightwing. So I'm kind of leaning towards that, yeah, Joker probably does have an idea about who everyone is. So, yeah, again, if you're getting Death of the Family, I would highly recommend you also get Nightwing uh, 15 and 16 because, because those will tie into this, and it's awesome. I would definitely highly recommend this series. All right, now for Marvel. Daredevil number 21. Daredevil is able to get the information, is able to get all the information he needs out of the Coyote, except, except the name of the people who hired Coyote to go after him, and... Because unfortunately, when uh, I think I forgot to mention this, but Daredevil last issue, Daredevil discovered that the Spot, who we thought was Coyote, was actually hooked up to a machine that apparently transfers the Spot's abilities to Coyote. 
And in this issue, Daredevil freed Spot, but Spot was just really messed up. Uh, he couldn't really control his powers, and when Daredevil starts interrogating Coyote about this, uh, Spot grabs Coyote, and they both fall through a portal, and we don't know where they are. And so after Co Daredevil gets almost all of the information he needs, he still doesn't know who sent Coyote after him. Uh, he frees all the hostages, and then... When he's, when he's back in New York and he's Matt Murdock again, he talks to Foggy about everything that's happened and sa and says that, you know, this could help the case that, the case about the dead mob boss that, that started this whole mess and also why Matt, why it seemed like Matt was off his game, game for a bit and he talks to, and, he, and they do talk and the, Matt and Foggy do talk talk about everything and try to resolve it, but unfortunately, when Matt finds out that Foggy told Kristen, uh, Dave, Kristen Davis, uh, the district attorney, no, wait, Kristen McDuffie. I don't, I don't know why I said Davis, but anyways, when Matt finds out that Foggy told Kristen about who he is and that apparently and that he was un unstable, Matt pretty much just cuts off all ties with him. He's furious. I mean, he is able to clear, sort of clear his mo name with Foggy, but he still doesn't accept, accept their friend, get their friendship back. And so after, and after this, on the last few pages, we see Kristen McDuffie meeting with the superior Spider-Man about bringing Daredevil in. And you can tell that the spirit, that the superior Spider-Man definitely is not a friend of Daredevil. Also, there's no spoilers for 700. Just let you know, it's just like a short one-page cameo for the Superior Spider-Man. That's it. Um, Daredevil number 21. I liked it. This is definitely one of my one of my favorite series series from Marvel. Um, what Mark Wade is doing on this title, it's awesome. He's killing it. Uh, I would definitely recommend definitely recommend Daredevil to anyone. Um, as far as and I think next month we're going to get a crossover to superior, with Superior Spider-Man. So I do look forward to Daredevil's interaction with the new Spider-Man, especially since he and Spidey are definitely good friends. I mean, and when I say Spidey, I mean Peter Parker. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I would definitely recommend Daredevil. Daredevil, it's an awesome series. You should definitely check it out. And especially next issue, because because I believe next issue will be starts a new story arc. So you. You can start reading with that. It's a new ju new story arc, perfect jumping on point. You should definitely check it out. All right, now Scarlet Spider, twelve point one. Uh, Scarlet Spider finds finds out about a killer who's been killing his victims with in a manner similar to when back when Kane was a free sort of a freelance assassin, and there'd be like a and he would pretty much use uh, the wall crawling abilities like harder on people's skin and leave like a red handprint on people's faces. Well, and it was his mark of Cain, so to speak. So when Scarlet Spider finds a victim that ha that's died of a similar circumstance, he pretty much goes out on patrol, tries to figure out who it is, and that and search leads him to an agent of the hand known as the Mark. And so when Scarlet, Scarlet Spider confronts the Mark. He's attacked by hand ninjas. Then suddenly two more agents of the hand, uh, the Arranger and the Brewster, show up. And they kill the Mark for his recent actions in Houston. And they also inform the Scarlet Spider that the Kingpin will be handling the hand's operations in Houston from this point forward. And so after hearing this, Scarlet Spider's pretty much, pretty much more determined now to stop the hand more than ever. Um, okay, twelve. so this is a point one issue. It's just a short, I'd say this is just more of a short one-shot story. If, you know, if you haven't read Scarlet Spider yet, I would definitely recommend picking this up because this is, because this is a good jumping on point. It's also a good sort of way to, to test the water, so to speak, to decide whether or not you want to get it. Um, I do recommend Scar the Scarlet Spider series, and I would definitely recommend getting this issue uh, as a good jumping on point. All right. Next up for Marvel, Thor, God of Thunder, number three. Okay, in the in the present day, Thor goes to the halls of all knowledge to find out which god, to find out uh, which gods were murdered or whether or not they were victims of the god butcher. And Thor's search does lead him to many uh, and many of the gods who were either declared slain or missing. He 
Thor pretty much discovers that they were all pretty much murdered at the hands of the God Butcher. Like, he sees all the corpses, he recognizes the work. And he's eventually, and his search finally leads him back to a cave from his first encounter with the God Butcher. And he meets a creature who states that the God, that the reason the God Butcher is killing so many gods is because of Thor. And probably his actions back when he was younger. Alright, well, I'd say Thor... God of Thunder is definitely a great series. I mean, uh, Rick Remen... Yeah, no, Jess, Jason Aaron. Sorry, I don't know why I said Remender. Anyways, Jason Aaron, uh, he definitely knows how to write a good good story that involves a lot of murder and mystery to it. I mean, it, it's very nice. Very nice. I would definitely recommend this to Thor fans or fans of Jason Aaron because this is a great series. Um, especially how, how everything sort of ties together with Thor's actions in the past along with... His search in the present and what's going to happen to Thor in the future. That's, it's definitely something impre It's definitely an impressive story arc so far. I would highly recommend this to people. All right now for Avengers number two. Um, pretty much in this issue, it's mostly just backstory. Um, we get some more back. We get backstory about our antagonists for the story arc, uh, X Nilo and about ex Nilo and stuff, and also we get to learn what hap uh, what happened when Tony Stark and Steve Rogers started to recruit people for the, you know, their Avengers, for like their second wave of Avengers plan. And also back in the, and also as far as what goes on in the present, uh, ex Nilo sends his little origin bombs to, to Earth so he can start like uh, evolving, evolving everyone on Earth, and so... Captain America finds out he has a uh, new Avenger manifold, teleport them to Mars to get ready for battle. And that's where the issue ends. Alright, well, I'd say I'd say this issue is just pretty much a backstory and explanation done by, a Hick done by Jonathan Hickman, the writer, to sort of explain what happened when Steve Rogers and Tony Stark asked people, you know, who wants to be on this team, and also... And also, you know, who the villain give us an idea about who the villains are, things of that nature. So, you know, I'd say if you're reading this, if you like, I'd say if you liked issue one, you should definitely get this, and probably get the third issue too, just so you can get like the first story arc, just so you can get the first story arc, and then decide whether or not you want to keep getting this series. But, I mean, my honest opinion, if you want to get Avengers, then I'd say. Get the last issue, get this issue, and then get the next issue, because it does seem, it seems pretty interesting. So I would recommend Avengers. Alright, last comic. Captain America, number two. Uh, one year has passed in Dimension Z since the events of Captain America, number one. And Steve, and Steve Rogers has been journeying across the wasteland of Dimension Z with uh, the child he he took from Zola's lab, uh, who he's named Ian. And they make, pretty much make their way across the wasteland until suddenly they're captured by these barbarian, by these barbarians called the Franks. And after they're captured, uh, Captain America and Ian are brought towards the leader, before the leader of, of the barbarians, and he accuses them of working for Zola, but they can't really speak the same language, so Cap tries to plead that they're innocent, but right wing but unfortunately, they're about to execute Ian. Alright, well, Captain America. This is definitely a different series than when Ed Brubick wrote it, okay? It seems a lot more like uh, some stuff that was done... I'd say this is a lot more related to a lot more stuff that was done, like, right after Captain America was brought back in the 1970s in the Silver Age. But it's still very interesting to see this... Uh, see uh, Captain America in a different dimension and also we get flashback also the series does flashback to Steve's childhood back in the 1920s um, very it, it's a very it's a very interesting series and I would definitely recommend it to Captain America fans who are you know looking for something that was a little different than when Ed Brubaker wrote wrote the series because I mean Rick Remender he's he's doing a great job on this I'll, I'll say that he so far he's doing a great job job. Uh, I can't wait to see how this ends, though. I can't wait to see how Cap figures out a way to get out of Dimension Z, 
And I kind of want to see what happens to the kid, Ian. Uh, see what happens to him, too. Because I think it's interesting to see uh, Cap Captain America as sort of a father figure to this kid. Um, yeah, so I would definitely recommend this series. Okay, um, that's it. Okay, that's it. Uh, short little recap. Captain America number two. Very interesting, very different from some cap stories I've read in the past. Uh, I would still recommend still recommend it for people. Avengers number two. Uh, pretty much explanation time for what happened in issue one. I'd say get it if you're interested in getting the Avengers series. Thor, God of Thunder number three. Three. Jason Aaron does a great job. Does a great job involved writing this story that involves mystery and murder. I would highly recommend it. Scarlet Spider, twelve point one. If you haven't read Scarlet Spider, this is a good jumping on point. Read it, see if, and see whether or not you want to get the rest of the series. Daredevil number twenty one. Still an awesome series. Little cameo from the Superior Spider Man. Can't wait to read the rest of this series. Nightwing number fifteen. This is definitely one of my favorite DC series. Highly, if you're reading Batman, I would definitely recommend this too. Green Lantern number fifteen. Simon Boz is definitely an interesting character. Uh, is definitely an interesting character in this. He's fine. Now I'm interested to see what happens next issue when he finally gets to learn more about the Green Lantern Corps. And Supergirl number fifteen. Uh, pretty much care. Kara's uh, pretty much Kara. Kara's now starting to work with Hell to build the time machine. Something tells me this is going to blow up in their face. All right. Well, that's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, Spider-Man 1991. Saying, see you later.